one. Welcome to the UFC. Wait, is it is it filming? Yeah, we're good. We're live. Welcome to the UFC Blanchfield versus Furo podcast. Uh, we are going to go over all of our favorite picks for the upcoming UFC card. Who we're going to be investing in on PS, all that. The first fight that we're looking at is Jamal Emmers versus Nate Landwer. Uh, Jamal is three dollars and twelve cents on the app. Landwer is three eighty three. So obviously the value is on the Emmer side of things. Um, so some just good inherent value without even going into the fight for Jamal. Uh, Nate is a very exciting fighter. His opponent, he'll just come at you the whole fight, throwing a ton of kicks and strikes, like always looking for that finish. Um, and he puts himself into harm's way doing so. But he definitely has some skills, um, a lot of pressure. Uh, tries to work it to the ground and goes from there. And he's coming off a decision loss to Dan Eage, went 0-4 on takedown attempts there, which I think is going to be somewhat key here to look at in this fight because um, Jamal is a wrestler by trade. He's a good striker, though. He uses his accuracy um, and takes his time, um, very technical striker. But as I said, wrestler uh, by trade. He has 40% takedown accuracy, 90% takedown defense. So very hard to take down and Nate Landwehr went 0-4 uh, in his takedowns in his last fight with Dan Ige, um, who doesn't have 90% takedown defense. Um, Jamal did lose to Giga Chikadze and Pat Sabatini, uh, where he got submitted pretty quick, but he did just, I, I think he beat Jack Jenkins in what was considered uh, his last fight, which was a loss, decision loss. Um, and then he got the... Uh, submission KO over Bazooka. And I think Jamal should win this. Only concern um, is the forward pressure of Nate can always be a problem. Like how will Jamal Emmers look backing up if he needs to fight on his back foot, but he's a great wrestler, a ton of power. Nate gets hit a ton. Um, I don't think he'll be able to hang on the feet or on the ground with Jamal. So I think it's a great value play here to kind of start off your card. Love it. Love it. All right, moving on to the next one, we got Aslan versus uh, Turkaj. How you yes, see this sir. one going down? So the Pleasure Man is more than a dollar more expensive than Ebo is, and this is a rematch uh, in which Anton Turkaj, the Pleasure Man, won the first fight. And I think this should be a fun fight. Like Ebo, super heavy-handed striker, he can knock you out easily, like with not even full power. Um, definitely is a bit sloppy, not a technical striker by any means, is all power. Um, and he has good kicks, good hands, power everywhere. Um, he isn't looking to wrestle really, but he can get kind of sneaky with it in a scramble or grappling. He's good with leg trips. We've seen him get some takedowns from the body lock leg trip. Um, and he's going up against a pleasure man who super fun and athletic fighter, mixes it up on his feet well, very diverse striking style. I mean, he has no problem taking risks, uh, aggressive takedowns, good offensive BJJ, uh, lots of pressure. I'd say that's probably the kind of cornerstone of his game is the pressure he applies when he's fighting. Um, Anton won their first fight, and Ebo, this is kind of one of those cases where Ebo was just ragdolling the hell out of him during the fight, but gassed out in the second round, got sloppy, and Anton was able to take advantage and choke him out there. And I think if Ebo has a gas tank, he destroys Anton. And it's like he knows exactly what happened to him in the last fight. Um, and we really have no idea if his gas tank has improved. But since they last fought, Ebo knocked out four people. And Anton has been finished twice um, in two of his three losses, including a knockout from Tyson Pedro. So I think we've seen Ebo improve since their last fight. I think his gas is probably going to be a, a lot less of a question. He's a lot more aware. Um, and you know, if he has no gas, he might lose again, but he beat the hell out of him the first time. Um, so, you know, if he can manage to stay composed, which I think he should be able to, he'll win this. Right on. All right. Um, and then let's move the pleasure, on man. to the main card here. Ju Wait, can we do oh, Julia Arce and Herb Burns? Yes, sir. My bad. All right. Julio. This is the last prelim one, I swear. All right, Julio. Julio. Herbert Baines. If I can spell it. Little Gil. There we go. Julio Arce. Herbert just looks like he's fodder. I've never seen him. <laughs> yeah. He just looks like cannon fodder. Yeah, I, I did. The, I just, his face, I kind of hate. It, he's taken a few dents before. 
So we got those so, two. This fight is it presents a lot more value than you would think just looking at these prices and not knowing anything else because Arce is the more expensive fighter than Herbert Burns. But in the books, Arce is a minus five fifty favorite, the biggest favorite on the entire card. And he's only a twenty set favorite on PS. Um so this is basically a pick 'em here for a minus five fifty favorite. So an insane amount of inherent value. Um, Arce is coming back from a year away, uh, but he is a very solid striker, tons of volume, really good striking defense. Um, he can come forward with power, counter strike well, uses both his hands and feet nicely, has really good movement when he's striking too. Um, and he is primarily a striker, has wrestling in his back pocket when he does fight the better strikers in the division, but um, his chin has been hurt a little bit in the past. He has 94% takedown defense um, coming off a loss to Mattel Jackson a very long time ago. Um, and Herbert Burns, Gilbert Burns, younger brother, definitely not the same fighter as Gilbert Burns. Um, he averages four takedowns per 15 minutes. We haven't seen him fight in a really long time too. I think it's been like two years. Um, but he can at times be submission or bust, but is definitely very dangerous on the ground. Like he is a BJJ expert. Um, I'm, I just kind of like, I think of the meme of like Gilbert Burns carrying Herbert out of the fight. Like, Grant, you remember that? Like, yeah. Herbert being carried like a little ill Victorian <laughs> child, like Gilbert out of the fight. And it's like, that dude just totally quit. Like, he wasn't injured or anything. He was completely winning that fight, gassed, <laughs> felt bad for himself, and then like just, <laughs> and then that scene happened, which I don't think he's ever going to live down. But, I think if uh, Arce is able to weather the storm here and stick it to Gilbert Burns, he's going to quit just like he did there. Um, he quit, yeah, and that was against Bill Algeo. And he, like like I said, he was just completely winning that fight. And he's just a quitter. Um, if Arce gets taken down, he's going to be in trouble uh, because Herbert's BJJ is insane, but Julio has 94% takedown defense. Um, and he's a minus 550 favorite. We're getting stupid value for him here on PS. So, got to take it. Absolutely love that. Yeah. Jackson, you know what Casemiro looks like? Yeah. <laughs> he, looks, he looks exactly like Herbert Burns. Well, s s type in Casemiro on PS. I think he has a, fa he has a face. Yeah, dude, he, he does. Has a profile pic. Awesome, he looks man. exactly like Casemiro. <laughs> Just a big blockhead. Yeah. Yeah, just a blockhead. <laughs> God. All right. Off to Rice McKee versus Chitty. Uh, how do you guys see this one going down? Oh, sorry. I was going to say he kind of oh, looks good. like um, Casemiro if he got, like, a really bad, like, lip implant or something. Or if he got, like, just dented somehow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But... Skeletor. Chidi, do we want to go straight to the main card or? Yeah. Well, I okay. mean, if, if there's anything else you want to touch on, I'm, I'm happy I'm to. I'm happy to go into another one. We can get into this uh, one as well. That's pretty much it. I mean, that, those are like my favorite value plays on the prelims. Oh, yeah. Love it. Right. Um, and this one, crazy age difference, obviously. Um, definitely the best uh, nickname battle in, in this entire card, I'm sure, with Chitty Bang Bang versus the Skeletor. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Uh, so Reese McKee, 28 years old, obviously, um, only fought once in the UFC, and it was a loss on that uh, surreal gone card, um, just like six months ago, I guess, seven months ago. Um, he has fought a uh, Hamzat. I guess I guess that was earlier in his UFC career. Obviously, he took a break, winless in the UFC. Hamzat is a tough draw in your first ever fight, though, obviously. Um, and then we have a bit of a vet, 35 year old. Chidi um, fought six or seven times ish. Also lost his last three, so something's gonna have to give in this one. Um, I'm gonna take the experience here. I'm gonna take Chidi. I'm curious to see what you think, Jackson. No, I mean, I I like where your heads at. Reese did make his uh, debut against Kamzat, where he landed not a single strike before getting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and he then he like lost to Alex real. Morono. He lost to Alex Morono after that, left the UFC for three years, came back and lost in a decision to Angelo. 
and he was taken down six times in that fight. So cold career had a tough go at it. Yeah, but why they bring him back? <laughs> I, I, think, <laughs> I think he's actually good, but like he's just had a tough time at it because he's that's about as bad as it gets. He's one of those strikers that's just like tall, and it's like that's their whole thing, you know. He's just like a tall yeah. guy. He's a rangy striker, pretty accurate, pieces you up from the outside. Then like he's he's pretty decent at coming in if he sees an opening, but hasn't gotten it done in the UFC. But yeah, no, I'm going with Chi. like a bad Dan Hooker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm a hundred percent going with Chidi with you here. Um, I hope he wrestles because Reese is literally like. He's the Skeletor. He's the easiest guy to take down in the world. But Chidi, like, he doesn't like to wrestle that much, but he definitely can. Um, I think he's just a better striker, longer, should move faster. Um, hopefully he gets a takedown here and works it to the ground because Reese is helpless there. But either way, Chidi. All right. On. Looks like you guys are leaning pretty hard towards Chidi. Uh, moving on to the next, so we got Algio versus Kyle Nelson. Um, so Algio's the guy you were just touching on, right? Against who fought yeah. Herbert Burns. If yeah, you look exactly. at uh, if you look at Algio's past fights, it says the fight against Her- Herbert Burns as TKO retirement. <laughs> <laughs> That's filthy. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, lost his fight right after that one to Andre Feely, and then since then has won two fights. Um, Obviously a bit older, so I don't know how much potential you're gonna get here. What's uh what was his price? Well, sorry. Let's see. We've got him at Bill L two three seventy eight okay. here. So I, I mean I would probably stay away from this one PS wise because I do think Algio takes this one. Um, but obviously not a ton of value there when he's fighting someone that's half the price. Um, he, he seems to always find find a way to outpoint his opponent. Only uh, the one TKO, which is a weird situation, like Jackson was explaining, and then he has one submission. The rest of his fights, um, pretty much in his entire MMA career, have come via decision, mostly unanimous, but some against him, some for him. So definitely a guy that knows how to how to get to the end of a fight. And in this type of situation, um, I, I feel like he'll he'll get through to the end of the fight and probably win by a decision, but. Um, yeah, I'm probably staying away from PS just because I don't see a ton of value here because you could totally uh, walk into something and, and you just lose all that. So, yeah. Yeah, I I think I'm, I'm pretty much in the exact same boat again. Like, I think Bill Algeo should win this fight. Like, his striking is pretty tricky and technical, insanely high volume, very good BJJ. We saw how durable he was in the Herbert Burns fight um, where he was losing but came out on top because of his toughness. Um, but Kyle Nelson though, um, he's, you know, gotten better and better with his striking. He's become a very busy forward pressure striker as of late. Um, it could be tough for Bill. He gets hit a lot despite being in like a karate stance all the time. Um, and this is just one where I don't want to pick a side. And if it's like, I do think Bill should be the one to win it, but if I were to put any money on this anywhere, it'd be on the Kyle Nelson side of things. So yeah, I agree with you. All right, on. All yeah, right. it's a tough one. Moving on to the next one we hear, have here is Ruzi Boev, if I can say that correctly, versus Dumas. Walk me through it. So, 263 versus Cedric Dumas's 208. Yeah, this is a pretty simple one for me. Um, <laughs> I, like, I don't think Dumas is going to win this title. <laughs> Dumas looks so cold, though. Dude, yeah, but he he's like a <laughs> real fighter. Like, he, dude, I'm looking at I'm looking at his photo on the UFC website, and he's just pull he pulled up to the to the he's, weigh in and with AirPods on. That's dude, he's built, he's got like the face tats and everything. But dude, like he he just has no actual fighting background. Like he is a street fighter, so I I guess turned turned. He has hood wolf tattooed across his chest. <laughs> Yeah, like he was literally a street fighter and then just started fighting the MMA. Um, he has had some mixed success in the UFC. Uh, decently well-rounded, okay takedowns and kickboxing. Uh, he can be powerful too. Uh, good leg kicks coming off his second UFC win over Abu Azaitar. But it's like, you have to look at the people they're feeding him. Like Abu is 40 years old, had no cardio, and it's just like this crazy street fighting guy. Like. And he t- didn't even get a finish. 
Yeah. And so it's like this dude, Nursultan, is an actual like wrestling animal and insane grappler, get it to the ground any way he needs to type of guy. Very aggressive when he gets to the ground too. Um, and I think just a guy with no fighting experience against a guy who's this experienced with grappling, this good at BJ, yeah. like it's just going to be a tough one for him. He like in Nurselton's coming off that convincing ass short notice win over Bruno Federa too. So I'm taking Nurselton. Yeah, this is this has submission written all over it. But oh, I yeah. would expect some crazy form of submission as well. Uh, I think we could see Dumas end up looking like that wrestler this weekend, and yeah, and it, it could get ugly. I think he could get put in some weird spots. Um, also. Uh, Razibov's nickname just being Black is weird. Yeah, that's so that's a very um, interesting nickname. <laughs> but yeah, only fought once in the UFC. Um, did get a KO, which was interesting. There's only been a few of those. I'm sure it was probably ground and pound. I didn't, I didn't see it, but I would guess it would be something like that just because um, most no, of his game that, does that, from getting people on the ground. That was the Bruno Ferreira fight, right? Yeah. Yeah, That no, he actually did display some real power there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So even like, more reason to pick him here exactly dude um but yeah i mean this dude's had every type of submission you can find in his career he's had kimuras he's had chokes he's had uh, arm bars he's had ko's by a slam um rear naked chokes pretty much anything Hell you yeah. can find his bag is deep um when it comes to his submission game um i i feel like this is a terrible matchup for dumas here i think his, his only chance is to just hope that uh, Razibov walks into something and, and that's probably his only chance in this one because the second that uh, Razibov gets his arms around him it's just going to be over fast so definitely leaning on that side on this fight and it's like there's not I mean it's pretty decent value on PS but his line I mean once we see what the prop looks like for him winning by sub I feel like that could be juice because like him only at minus 270 I feel like he should be like the Julio Arce line like minus 550 type yeah yeah I don't actually know what it is by sub yeah has they it usually come, come out closer yeah. to the fight yeah yeah, yeah. all right well, it sounds like this is going to be an absolute dominant show. Now we got PS partner Chris Weidman taking on Bruno Silva. Um, I think we have a good idea of how we're going to feel about this fight already, so we don't really need to digress too far into it, but we're excited to see Chris Weidman to get back in there and get into that win column. What do you guys have to say? Grant, how do you feel about this one? I don't know. I, I mean, I... I I would love Weidman to put on a hell of a performance and, and end this one quickly, and, and that would be super cool. Um, both guys are kind of on a downward trend. They've both lost, both lost four out of five. Um, Bruno Silva's fought Alex Pereira. He did beat Brad Tavares, which I think – oh, no, okay. That's who uh, Weidman just lost to, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a common opponent, we did see Bruno take home the win in that one. So however you want to read into that one, it's probably not great for Weidman. Um, but I think this is a winnable fight. It, it's just a matter of, of how much effort and how much will Weidman really still has to, or if he's just kind of going through the motions here. But I, I mean, I would, I would love to see him get it done. I'm curious to see how you think this one ends, but yeah. Okay, I mean, I think this is a hundred percent doable on either side here. Like, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and it's hard for me to lean either way. And it's like, I love Chris Weidman. Like, he's one of my favorite middleweights ever. But it's like, you can't ignore that he came back from that, you know, legs like leg snap injury and just looked Mm -hmm. not good. Um, And you know, I'm hoping it was it was ring rust. which it could have been like he had been away for such a long time with a serious injury. It could have been all mental and it's like, he could be in a completely different space now, but it's like yeah. from an outside perspective, he looked a little bit older. He looked a little bit slower. Um, but we've seen him be, you know, the middleweight champion, like be Anderson Silva twice. Um, and so maybe we have to give him some leeway. Maybe there were some mental issues first fight back. I mean, I do think like without any improvements from the last fight, it's Bruno Silva's fight to lose probably, but like he hits hard. Um, 
He's a great striker, good BJJ, can knock you out, implement a grappling game plan if he needs to. But I think it could be won by either side. It just depends on what version of Chris Weidman we're seeing. So It's totally winnable by either, either fighter, I think. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Moving on to the next one, we got a more... We got a really entertaining one here between Vicente Luque versus Joaquin Buckley. Um, <clears throat> I see something weird. I wonder if you, you see got? it too. This is the co-man. What was... Oh, I mean, that's wild, yeah. Um, but, no, he's saying the price differentials between Buckley yeah, and yeah. Luque. Yeah. But, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean... Obviously, the odds are a lot slimmer uh, from a Vegas perspective right now. So, you know, inherent value-wise, you're getting a, probably the most value on Buckley of anybody on the entire card. So that's just a reason to invest in him, you know, right off the bat. He's going up against Vicente Luque, who is primarily a striker, tons of power in his hands. Solid wrestling and defense, though. Good submissions when he does get to the ground. Um he wants to bang it out, though, uh, stay standing, take down defenses at 62%, which might seem low. But if you discount the Bilal Muhammad fight, his takedown defense is actually very good. He's only been taken down seven times in his UFC career. Um, and and that's even through people always trying to take him down because he's such a talented striker. Um, and we've seen his diversity in his game fight plans. Like we saw him beat Rafael Dos Anjos with a grappling-centric game plan in his last fight. Uh, he's going up against Joaquin Buckley, a very fun and exciting striker, highlight reel type of fighter. He can do absolutely anything he wants and add a ton of power to it. Really good forward movement. Um, has gotten better at not chasing the giant KOs and has actually started to work in some takedowns into his fights. Uh, he has four in his last two that used to not really be a factor in his fights. He was more of just a flashy knockout artist. Um, and this is definitely his biggest test at welterweight. He's a former middleweight fighter. Um, but Luke is a really good striker, grappler, and offensive wrestler. I think Luke probably has a very slight edge here, but the value is just undeniable. Buckley is extremely dangerous, can end the fight at any any moment. Um, and he needs to be the playoff prediction strike, I think. Yeah, I think I think Buckley is, is absolutely mandatory on PS. Um, pretty much... Um, a 50-50 odds-wise anywhere else, and you can get crazy underdog odds on them on PS. So, um, yeah, it's an absolute must-buy for me. Um, I, If I was just picking straight up between the two, though, I would probably pick Luke. Um, I just like the experience aspect. He's He's been in every kind of fight you can imagine against uh, the very, very best in this division. Um, he's fought just about everybody for more or less eight nine years now um yeah but if 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 you can get the crazy value there i mean it's a no-brainer on buckley but i have my concerns a little bit on his ability to actually get this one done um but that price is low just in general and he's only 29 and a long career ahead of him as well so i pretty much can't lose investment i would say I i don't see his price going down too too much if he does lose so I will be investing in Buckley going into the weekend. Let's go. All right. That's going to be a fun fight to watch. Mm-hmm. On to the next fight, we got the main event here, Fiero <clears throat> versus Blanchfield. How do you guys see this one going down? I've heard a lot of hype about both of these two fighters. Yeah, rightfully so. I mean, so we got Blanchfield, who's a slightly cheaper fighter. And yeah, like you said, there's a bunch of hype. Because one of these fighters... I will probably win a title fight or a title shot after this. Both of them have super quality wins recently. Um, Aaron is a very good grappler, good striker. Um, definitely applies pressure, uses her striking most of the time to set up her grappling. And she averages six significant strikes a minute, three takedowns a fight. So she's just absolutely everywhere. Um, she's coming off a close win over uh, Santos where her takedowns and striking defense looked really, really underwhelming, but she was applying the pressure um, like she always does. Uh, her opponent, Manon Fioro, very good striker, uh, real finishing power, really good get-up game when she gets taken to the ground. She doesn't really like to be there, but I would say she's an underrated uh, you know, ground practitioner. She has a takedown in almost all of her UFC uh, fights to date. So 
Um, she does like prefer to strike though. She likes to fight from range. Uh, she has a striking differential six to three, so she's super sharp in terms of her accuracy. Uh, like I said, not just a striker though. She can get gritty if it really needs to. And she's coming off a win over Rose Nama Yunus, who we saw beat Amanda Rivas uh, in the last main event. And this is a pretty tough fight to pick, grappler versus striker matchup for sure. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the underdog here. I mean, I guess not the prediction strike underdog, but I would say consensus favors Aaron Blanchfield. Uh, man, it presents maybe a little bit less value on prediction strike in that sense, but um, Aaron Blanchfield gets hit a ton in her fights. Man, and hits very hard. Uh, Aaron's takedowns really aren't that great. Manon has really good takedown defense. Um, I see a ton of people on Aaron for this fight. She is tough as hell, and she'll do anything to try to get uh, Fiora to the ground. I was just so un unimpressed with her takedowns in her last fight. I think just like looking at what these fighters are good at, what they're good at defending, how they like to attack, I think Manon is a really good option here. So I'm going with her. Yeah, I think this is probably where we're going to differ. I just can't deny the value here on Aaron Blanchfield. Um, I, mean, I mean, we've covered the last three or so fights. Um, I, I just can't go against her again. I think I picked against her in the past, and, and if you can get PS value here when she is a pretty clear consensus favorite, um, I mean, it's not crazy. I, I could definitely see this fight going either way, but when you can get that kind of value – um, on someone as skilled and talented as Aaron Blanchfield, I think you have to take yourself up on that opportunity. Um, I also think that either way, I mean, her price is a lot right now for sure, but it, it'll be right back up there if she loses this fight because, I mean, she's only 24. There's a super long career. I, I would be shocked if she doesn't have a multi-year um, reign at uh, with a belt in this division at some point in her career or so pretty much low risk in my opinion just if you're willing to hold for a while um Fiero definitely could win this fight but if she loses this one it's gonna be tough to get back to this point at uh 34 and if she does it'll probably be against uh Aaron Blanchfield or something for a belt in a couple years so you can there's an easier path back to this exact moment for Blanchfield if she is the one that loses so um for the lower risk and the value I think I have to lean with Aaron here. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, not to me, because I'll be going with Fioro, but I do like where your head's at. All right. Well, that's all we have for this. Appreciate you all, and see you next time. Peace now.